call this meeting of Ohio County Fiscal Court to order uh, on this uh, uh, 14th day of May 2019 at 5 p.m. I'm going to ask Marty Shepard to come forward. He's going to do the prayer and the pledge for us tonight. Go thank you. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we thank you for all your blessings. We thank you, Father God, for this great county that we live in, this great country. We ask, Father God, that today that you will guide uh, guide us through this meeting. Uh, let us make the right decisions. We thank you, Father God, for our military. We thank you for everything, Lord. We just ask that uh, you be with us and guide us. Thank you uh, for this great day. We ask that you forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very much, you have all first on your blood. What'd you find out about your cancer in your body? That one cancer in my bladder. Oh, what? What? But I had problems. But I had problems. Okay. cancer. Yeah, that's the pain that's on people. And how's it? Uh, gentlemen, before you, you have the uh, minutes of the April twenty fifth minute meeting. Uh, Okay, we're supposed to spend five till five, but let's go ahead and do it. So move, Judge. Okay. It's just a public hearing on your county road oh. aid and LGEA money. Okay, we've got a, we'll, we'll get it right after this minute on the meeting. We've got a motion by Larry Cam. Second. Second by Jason Bullock. Any discussion? Corrections or additions? Being none, all favor say aye. Aye. Uh, that motion carries. Now, Ann, you can talk. <laughs> this is our public hearing for any public comment on our county road aid money and uh, LGEA money for the budget year 2019-2020. Is there any comments or questions? Being uh, this uh, being none, uh, this public hearing is uh, adjourned. And thank you, Anne. You need a cop. Uh, well, you'll have the documentation from the minutes that we had. It. Okay. Moving along. You have the bills, claims, payments, and transfers before you. You have a motion to approve. So move with the late list. Motion, Sam Small, to approve the bills, claims, including the late list. I've got a couple questions. Okay, we need a second first. I'll second for the Second for, okay, now, Larry. We're ready. And it says outroad FEMA into government discretionary. Arnold Weedman and you cut road up. I have to have money on the books in order to pay for a road. Is that the only reason I have to have that money on the books? Okay. Because it says outroad FEMA into government discretionary. Arnold Weedman and you cut road up. I have to have money on the books in order to pay for a three hundred forty-eight thousand. Yeah, that's three roads. And we're also having to do a budget amendment because of all of this. Out. I think Less that's money a good one. Mm-hmm. And I got another one on page one. Oil change and rotate tars. 2011 crown $487. Which page is this? It's on page one of the bills and claims. Okay. Is it under the sheriff's? Uh, yes. I believe that's a transmission. The no, there's a transmission above it. Transmission repairs $4,436. 
I'm sorry. How much was it again? The transmission repairs was four thousand four hundred thirty-six dollars and forty-six cents. Okay. Which one did you have a question about? The oil change and rotate dollars four hundred eighty-seven dollars and fifty-two cents. Uh, I can go get the bill and let you look at it. God, ain't that awful high to rotate the tires and change oil? Well, there might have been something else on it, and it's it's not printed out there. You see where it's shoved up against the box? I'm reasonably sure it would be. I don't yeah. recall seeing that bill, but I'm not. Sure. I'm sure there's more to it than that. I think it'd be worth checking out. Okay, I can pull that one and let you see it. And then here's one on page ten: oil change and wipers. A hundred and forty-four dollars and ninety cents. That's at the road department, unit eleven. I can pull that bill if you need. It was to done it more forward. Mm -hmm. Sounds awfully expensive to me. I can pull the bill. Please look yeah. at. Uh, that one's probably one correct. Yeah. So. This is uh, this was the uh, uh, truck, I believe, that Dennis Beatty drives. I believe. I seen it on the road back this evening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, may have damaged them new windshield wipers when yeah. he hit that deer. When you all are doing something else, I'll run get them. Where did this FEMA money come from? The three hundred and uh... we we budgeted. Uh, when, when did that happen, Charlotte? Last spring? Last we budgeted anticipating we might get that much, but we're not going to get that much. You just have to have a blind in your budget to pay a bill, and until we get this money from the governor's discretionary fund down, we got to pay it from somewhere out of our budget. That, that What's happened is a good thing that the judge is getting so much money from flex funds and emergency money and governor's discretionary, we didn't have that built into the budget. So I've got to find it somewhere on paper so I'll be able to pay that bill. Well, if we're not getting that much, how could you put it in here? It's coming. Getting what? The 348000 It's on. It's on contract. It's coming. <coughs> But she said we wasn't going to get that much. That was the thing. FEMA. That we're not going to get what we thought we were going to get in FEMA. You just got to have somewhere in the line we item on the budget to do extra it. Extra unanticipated and governor's discretionary. Uh, in our part of the FEMA, about 318000 or what it was going to be this Charlie year? That's question. I don't know how 218. What? 218. 218 this year? 218000 Isn't that about 100000 less than the prior year? We done that when we done all the FEMA specs and all that. We use contract labor and all that. We keep was able to do it on our road guys. Oh, yeah. And it's safe on that part. So we got $280,000. Yeah, but she said she didn't even make that. A, a, lot, le a lot less than was anticipated anyway, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, any further discussion? Thing that we'll, we'll call it Miranda. More of you? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? So are we going to hold those two bills out while she's checking them? No, that's not the way we're voting it. She'll check on them and report back and explain it to them. I'll make copies and bring them mm -hmm. when you get down to something. But I don't think it's going to Are y'all, I can go get them right now? Yeah, why don't you do that, Ann, and uh, mm -hmm. we can. Uh, do we be it out the. Uh, Repairs and stuff, or just somebody get to do them? It's just whoever uh, each department wants to have done. They're not there down. I'll be right back. Well, I have to, though, because there's nothing there. There's no way you really can, but it's not apples and apples. One guy might do, uh, if you do it by the hour, one might get a whole lot more done in an hour and another one. Well, most. Uh, Dealerships has got set fees. That, uh, they got set fees they go by, but each dealer don't have the same book on that. Well, they, they have a set fee how many hours it takes to do a particular job. In Larry's case, it must have took a long time to take them done. Do we want to table that until the next thing? Well, 
Uh, I don't see what the problem was. It's just, I mean, the veils are vetted before they ever go on there. And somebody signed a ticket that the repair was done and it was worth it. Some department head or elected official did. And I'm not familiar with either one of those, but somebody signed off on them. <coughs> I'll tell you what, we, I think we will. We're in the middle of the road. I know. I can't just leave it. I know. Let me see if we've got one. Two, three. I'll be four up high. Larry, can you $62 for the fuel tank. And on the transmission. Tank on the same there, Larry. Yeah, the one of them showing a fuel tank at uh, two hundred and sixty-two dollars. The one that was one hundred forty-four. It looked like that line. She typed it, but it ran out of room on the printout. Hmm. So another one. Oh, was, you guys want to see the the one that was on page ten. That's, he's got it here. Show that. that I got was at uh, Menards had them on sale. <laughs> they were about seven dollars. Go ahead and continue, Miranda. <laughs> oh, I'm up. Yes. Judge. Yes. Okay, Cam. Cam? Yes. Okay. Uh, next you have the Treasurer's uh, financial report for April uh, 2019. I make a motion here. Second. Second by Larry Cam. Um, any discussion or questions? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. We have the clerk's uh, uh, April uh, financial. Motion, motion by Joe Barnes to acknowledge the receipt. Second, Second by Jason Bullock. Any discussion? Are questions for Bess? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Uh, we have to do uh, something to recognize, to give to our health insurance company. I'll let uh, Ann or Renetta explain that. Okay. Thank you. We, uh, when we did our open enrollment, we had a few employees with an issue because of the new health insurance laws. And as it is now, if an employee wants to cover their spouse or family, it is astronomical. Uh, just, just to cover their spouse is almost $850 a month, and we don't have any budget for it. 
because of the insurance laws, the way they stay, if you offer employee spouse or employee family, that person's spouse cannot get online to the government health insurance and apply based upon their financial status. We're not required by law to offer employee yeah. spouse or employee family, only employee children. But we're actually hurting some of our employee spouses by having this in there. I They're not lie. able to get it other places. In the 10 years, we had one person, and that was five years ago, that covered their spouse. And only one. We've not had anybody else. And it's real pricey. Yeah. It is. Yes. Yeah. So if we take this off of the books and no longer offer it, then we have some employees that can cover their spouse. Yeah under the government health insurance. How should that motion, how should that motion be read? Uh, I just think you would just, I printed this out here, you would just need to accept the revised uh, insurance. And then this would be Okay, okay. let my motion reflect that then. Motion by Larry Count to uh, uh, take the revised health care plan concerning spouse and, uh, and uh, children. Second. Second by Sam Small. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Uh, that, uh, that motion carries. Okay, who's got the safety? Uh, Renetta, you're up. We need a motion for that. I make motion. Motion by Joe Barnes. Second. Second by Larry Morphew. Uh, just a little bit of discussion I see here on the mowing mm -hmm. uh, with proper clothing. and I, I know I work outside a lot, and shorts are a lot more comfortable, cooler, or whatever. And I notice this says uh, long pants. And I know this, I don't think this includes chipping or ceiling, which they're out on the chipper and such, and uh, where that uh, they could stay a little cooler if you had shorts on. That's the reason they make shorts to be cooler. And, so. and that's um, the way our dress code is, it's at the discretion of the supervisor and the judge, and the judge has stated that he does not want employees to wear shorts under any circumstance. So that's, oh. that's why it's written. It's because of safety issues I faced when I was at the park. Now, now safety in, in which respect? How? Um, um, Hang their shirt. Bug, bug bites, uh, weed seed reactions from weeds and and uh, things like that, and, and uh, those sort of things. Rashes. Whatever. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Polls like sign. Our safety policies and procedures are adopted. Um, our purchasing policies and procedures. Um, do y'all have? Co did y'all get copies of those? Yes. Have you read over them? Uh. There was, I'm passing out the. There were two other things we added since um, you all got your copy. Mm -hmm. One of them was on page 12, increasing the inmate meals from seven dollars to eight dollars a day. And these are ones that are working out on the... It has a lot in here about the credit card changes as well. Yeah, that continues to be a problem. And yes, that's one on page one. Just oh, you can have my... Is that the only two changes made in the well, original? I mean, they're all in red, but that's okay. the only two changes since Beyond that. Beyond that, yeah. Got you. And the, also, one other one on the first page, uh, it just clarifies... 
that the funds they're speaking of in this policy are county budgeted funds and does not include uh, the sheriff's department has a direct fund, the jail has a commissary, and the county attorney has his own funds that don't go through the county budget. We need to adopt this, Judge. Yes. Okay. Motion by Larry Cam. Second. Second by Sam Small. Any discussion? Being no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Like sign? Motion carries. Standing orders. This is something we do every year. Uh, we have to do it as part of our budget that we pass. It just authorizes me to write checks for payroll, health insurance, utilities, and any debt service. And this is motion, motion by Jason Bullock. Second. Second by Larry Cam. That's to, that motion is to adopt the uh, standing orders. Any discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. That motion carries. Okay, now we're ready for the, the budget. Ordinance 2019-5 is the budget for 2019-2020 fiscal year. I present that and make the motion for it to pass and ask for a second. I'll make a second on the budget. Second by Jason Bullock. Okay, roll call it. Morphew? No. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? No. Johnston? Yes. Cam? Yes. Uh, so the first reading of the budget is, uh, is passed. Uh, administrative Code, uh, Mar uh, Renetta. Um, this is just the administrative code that I've mailed to everyone. So there's some of it's just clean up, a lot of it was just clean up. Um, so there's a couple of little changes in there, but I think you all would have already kind of viewed that. So instead of recovering all of it, I would uh, move to accept. I'll second. second. Okay, we have motion and a second. If there any discussion or questions for Renata, um, we can in June, the month of June, we can look at this some more if any of you on the committee want to do so. Uh, Larry had some things he wanted to look at then, so we can do that that Well, time. this is just the first reading, so we still yeah. have. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Uh, that is uh, the administrative code changes. The first reading is approved. Uh, as y'all know, we had to transfer a bunch of money around to get through f to the rest of this fiscal year. It was in which y'all have... Uh, is this second reading or first reading? First reading. First reading. Uh, first reading of budget ordinance... Amendment. A budget amendment ordinance 2019-7. Uh, as y'all have had copies of that, I believe. So uh, I need a motion to approve that first reading of that uh, budget amendment. And that's for this fiscal year we're in now. Make a motion. Motion to Sam Small. Is it the two we talked about? That's the second. second by Jason Bullock. How much money did you move around, Ann? Where did you take it from? Well, I had to, that was the thing of money we were talking about. But what's happened is we got the line of credit for $500,000. And I've already used all of that money. Now that I have to have a way to pay the bank back, I'll do the same thing next year. I mean, next month, we'll borrow another 500000 because Scotty's is just black topping, I guess, in Ohio County exclusively. So that's why I have to amend in a million dollars in order to pay the bank back twice. It's the same 500000 but I borrow it this month, pay it back at the end of the month, I turn around and have to borrow it back again the second time, the 1st of June, and pay it back the end of June. It's, it's a book 
housekeeping thing that's required. That's how I have to do it by the state rules. Could we, uh, could we not have borrowed it for two months or three months, whatever necessary? Well, or would I've already spent the first 500000 uh, and Scotty will do the same thing again next month. Yeah. When you, when you pay it off, is that not close the loan out? Yeah, but this is on the books. Not on a line of credit. Right. Okay. It doesn't close the line of credit. That's open until the end, through the end of this year. Okay. I'm sure we could get it. Anytime a bill's paid, you have to have the money in the bank, and you also have, a, have to have a line on the budget to get it from. So you have to have both of those things in row before they can do it. And Scotty's has made it complicated because they didn't do our flex uh, front rows last fall except uh, Joe's one road. And other, they didn't do the rest of them last year. So they got to do them this spring as well as all the discretionary money thing we got of them and all the money that y'all PO'd out of your, uh, out of your uh, uh, what you call chip and seal money. All them PO, all them still out there. So all of that's got to be paid before the money comes back. I can't, oh. I can't understand why um, I had a road that's supposed to be done last year, and they've come in here and done four or five, but we just come up with the money. Why did they not finish last year's first? No, we didn't really give them an order. We wanted it done quickly, with one exception. Uh, 19 School Road, I told them had to get first. And I guess they based everything around it, because that was a part of uh, discretionary money that actually was had a uh, it was time sensitive. It was time since we I had, had two roads last year like that too. I was going to call yeah. Chris and talk to them. Then we hit bad weather, so then they yeah. ducked out. Yeah, so. but they've done about five that wasn't. Well, the 19 school road was supposed to be done a long time ago. Right? Yeah, it was done. I know. Well, I, I know. I don't these know others that come in and wasn't, and they jumped they, ahead of. I think they went ahead to try to do as many as they could. Yes. And left the longer one to last. Well, uh, they're. they're uh, mm -hmm. We wanted to get them all. So then that wouldn't be an issue if they'd hurry and get them all done. I know last year they didn't get any of the flex roads done. Yeah, they, they got J.T. King. Yeah, they not, didn't get yours. No, not in my district. So. They got J.T. King's on one they got last year. That's oh, flex roads. Uh, okay, all in favor say aye. I'll, I'll think about it. Aye. Uh, Opposed like sign. That uh, ordinance also is uh, first reading is passed. Sheriff Quarterly report. They had our quarterly report to uh, the court. You all have it in your packet, um, the packet of things together. We will make up for it. I'll make a motion to acknowledge it. Okay, I have a motion to have a second? Yeah. Right got the, you got the second? No, you'll have to get it. You got get she on a copy. She needs a copy of it. Okay. And then uh, you have an annual property tax settlement as well? Yeah, okay. we got acknowledged as well. Okay. I'll uh, second. You got a motion and a second? You get the motion and a second. Okay. Any questions? Y'all making it too easy on her. You ought to ask her some questions. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Post like sign. Motion carries. Okay, you have some property you want to declare surplus? Yes, and that's also in those packets. We had the uh, Nacho State Dependent Tax Office for our home while we started. And we um, requested that we remodel right now, and we have a lot of debt for that. And we are no longer in need of that safe. So we are wanting to um, surplus it and do still this to um, get out of the office for us. Do you know how much that thing weighs? Well, we actually pulled it out of the tax office. It's sitting right outside the door in the, the big hallway in the courthouse now. So a pallet jack did it, so it's about 2,000 pounds. It's a, pretty, it's a pretty large safe. And it will take some special equipment to get down them steps. Uh, that's what I was fixing to say. Uh, it will. <laughs> can't just roll them down there. No, I believe when it was brought in, <laughs> they were, hadn't finished building the building yet. And we put in the, in the bid that there would in be. In 41. The removal of it would be at the cost of any potential buyer and they would assume this risk in moving that yeah. both for themselves and any anybody that helped them and not cause any damage to our building. Yeah.
They'll probably have to pay somebody to move that thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm really not sure how they're going to get I hope they don't tear up our steps when it comes That's down. That's exactly right. But uh, I would I made a motion to put it into a buzz. Motion, but was that Sam? Yeah. Second second. by Joe Barnes. Yeah. Uh, any further discussion? And if y'all think that we ought to move it somewhere else, if you do, you can move it. Uh, is that fair enough? Yeah. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. You can sell that safe. Safely. Uh, oh, I can extension. Budget. Uh, have you got a copy of that? How soon does that have to be moved after the since June 11th? Yeah. When they're gonna open it. Yeah, I'm going to say it would be sheriff's discretion, but I'd say not very long. I'd say 30 days. But anyway, what is it? The, the extension office's budget. We have to thank this. Do we approve it? We acknowledge that we got it, that they gave it to us. Okay. E it was by email. Motion by Larry Cam. Second, Second by Thank you. Sam. Uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Next, Nancy and Tara, y'all come up and tell us what you got on your mind. What, what are you? About planning and zoning. Oh. She didn't, uh, she didn't word it the way that I okay. thought it. Complete task committee? Is yeah. that what well, they doing a comprehensive study oh. planning and zoning for Beaver Dam and Hartford. Yeah. came with Nancy today because we're here on behalf of the uh, Beaver Dam and Hartford Planning and Zoning Committee. And I'm representing now, I took over for Justin, I guess, <laughs> the planning and zoning attorney. Um, it's a high paying gig. Anybody else yeah. needs that? But Nancy had come to me because we're running into a couple of hiccups. And I understand there might be a little bit of trepidation about sure. getting involved in planning and zoning and some of the pitfalls there. But one of the things that we're running into is the fact that our our original comprehensive plan has not yeah. been officially updated since it was first adopted in 1991. Oh, okay. And over the 30 years since seven. then, our goals and objectives and the general landscape of our county has changed a lot. And the tremendous changes there are not reflected in our comprehensive plan. Uh, there are mandatory updates that we have to undertake over the years to, in order to keep planning and zoning legal. And those updates, what they are, the bare minimum, and that's what you're seeing in front of you is some of those updates that they've done. But what we really need to do is an overall complete rehaul of our comprehensive plan for planning and zoning and update our goals and objectives so that we can actually attract new business and work with new businesses when they come to the county. And one of the problems that I've run into, because Larry, he's who's heading up the uh, Planning and Zoning Committee, and then Neil's back here too. One of the issues that they brought up is they're like, what can we do to convince people how important this is to update it? Because I know you'll, I, I, no big secret, there's been a lot of talk about our neighbor um, Planning and Zoning caused them some headaches recently. One of the reasons that we're running into problems Just is people will come to Nancy and say, hey, I want to put a new business in Hartford, I want to put a new business in Beaver Dam, and she's having to say no because we can't even work with them. We can't even offer a conditional variance because yeah. of our plan and our goals and objectives are just so outdated and so old. Mm -hmm. So we've contacted Grad, and they've given us a proposal to completely overhaul and, and redo our goals and objectives so that we can hopefully finalize a plan that, that works for the county as a whole. Unfortunately, that is going to cost us about $25,000. Um, Hartford and Beaver Dam are willing to put forth some money to accomplish this. But as it is part of the county and as it promotes uh, both Hartford, Beaver Dam, and Ohio County as a whole, we are coming to the fiscal court and asking if they would chip in on a third of that so that we can update this and actually make our cities uh, a little bit more attractive to new business so that Nancy doesn't have to turn them down and we can say, no, we can work with you and we want your business here. So I think, I think the three-way split would be roughly $8,300, $8,500, I think, from each entity. And uh, so that is what we're asking the fiscal court if we can get that approved. You said twenty-five thousand total. Yes. Divided by three. Twenty-five some change, I think. Maybe. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, 80, Eighty-three, thirty-three. Yeah. <laughs> eighty-three, thirty-three. And thirty-three cents. 
and 33 of another state. Yeah, the county, the county is included, and that's part of the thing that we would be working with. Yes. Is, uh, updating the goals and objectives, not just for the two cities, but the reason this is important for the county is because we have to work with OCE, that we have to work with what the county wants, um, you know, to kind of promote some of these businesses that are coming in, because yes. it, does, it is reflective back on our financial goals. Yes, yes. Any questions for me? So are you are you incorporating the county and countywide plans though? Not at this time, though. No. It's just the two cities is where it would only be affecting it. But obviously, those are your two biggest cities. Yeah, and the cities are in in the county. Uh, I don't know if the other two biggest cities, which is Fordsville and Centertown, um, um, I have looked at it lately or not. But I know they have talked about it in the past. And Centertown has a nuisance ordinance, which is. Uh, Kind of the first, it's sort of yes. like that, sort of planning zone. It's kind of one of those all or nothing undertakings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's not a comprehensive plan at all. But um, what I think, Tara and uh, Neil and uh, all, uh, Larry and Nancy, what I think, hey, I got everybody's name, how about that? Uh, here's what I think I think that uh, we'll take this under advisement. Unfortunately, it's going to be our July meeting before that we actually pull that out on July. Yeah, yeah, we have to be in the in the into that set, uh, part of it, and uh, we will can look at it that time. And during, and before that time, I'm going to appoint a committee of here to uh, kind of help review it to make the recommendations at that time. Uh, uh, Sam, since you're on OSEDA, would you serve on that committee? Okay. Okay. Larry, would you serve on that committee? This Larry. Oh, <laughs> that Larry. <laughs> little humor there. Would you? Um, yeah. Okay. And I'll, and I'll point out too, one of the other reasons that we're coming to the fiscal board is when we update these goals and objectives, what we'd like is we'd like some county input, not yeah. just from the two cities, but we want to know what the county is looking for and what the county wants yeah. to promote is pro too and we can work that in there yeah. because as nancy can tell you we've had several industries that come in just into the county into bluegrass crossings or, or other places and before they even dig they want a permit from her yes yeah. and she'll tell them we don't have countywide planning zoning they don't care they just want a permit mm -hmm. so this can be something too that we can kind of say listen this is what we want to do and yeah. we want to break down any barriers right so. we, we've actually talked about that of having a something with their occupational tax that would have sell a business license or something so they would know people was in the in the county doing business we know where to send the tax bill to so the this thing could be an advantage to us on that big big time as far as we're sending our occupational tax bills to uh, but we will uh miranda you make you a big note and you schedule that with uh, between nancy and and our two court members and it'll need to be done well before the 1st of July. So we have all this worked out. But then, okay? okay. If this is a stepping stone trying to get the county to go countywide planning and zoning, I'm definitely against it. That is not and the I don't think system. the money that Beaver Dam brings in, I don't think it ought to be. The court's in pretty financial bad shape. We're broke. And I just don't see that it's the court's responsibility. Well, right now, this is just a comprehensive plan. Yes. This, has a, this has nothing to do with the actual zoning districts or anything. Yeah. But this is literally just to update the goals and objectives so that we can promote growth yeah. within the And these cities are in our county. I've, I've had to, uh, I've had to repeat that a lot of times uh, to remind people, hey, they're, they're, they're part of our county. City, city of Beaver Dam, Hartford, Fordsville, Center Town, Mike Henry, and Rockport. They're all part of the county. So. Thank you. All. I appreciate it, and we, that meeting will be set up. Thank you. Appreciate y'all coming. Uh, Miranda? Yes. If and when you get that meeting set up, contact me, will you? Will do. Is there a certain day that works best for you? Uh, no, I'm pretty flexible. So. Okay. It will probably be Sam, what time do you get off from work? Okay. You'll set that at five thirty. Yeah. Nancy. Nancy. It'll be 5.30 in the afternoon when they set it up. Is that okay with you? I didn't know. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. How about this? Next Wednesday? Next Wednesday? A week from tomorrow.
Next Wednesday? A week from tomorrow. Okay. Larry? Yeah. Be Larry? sure to say so. Be okay. sure to touch you base with him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Either office, right? You want yeah. me to my office or here? Why don't y'all see get a better cut? Why don't you go to her office? It's in Beaverdam City Hall. Yeah. Why don't y'all go there? Okay. That'd be okay? I'll yeah. Well, is it down by the police station? Yes. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I'll give out my information to her. You've been there before? Yeah. I'll be back tonight. I don't go to Beaver that much. Thank you. Thank you. I was just wondering if you the landmark. Waterboard appointment. Fresh my not waterboard. Wastewater appointment. Who was going to appoint? We better. On this wastewater appointment, came a recommendation came in on an email, and we didn't bring it. We put it on the agenda and didn't bring it in with us, so we can't remember who that was, so we'll put that off till the next meeting. Uh, uh, Bo, he's got something to tell you that he did. Procedure that went through at the park. So basically, we, uh, for years, contract for the crops, crop grounds, 40 acres. We got two sale bids in. Uh, Mr. Westerfield, Dale Westerfield, uh, Westerfield Farms got 200 acres, or I'm sorry, $200 per acre, $8,000 a year. I just need to acknowledge that. Y'all just look at both of them if you need to. Was that the uh, most, both? Yeah. yeah. Most he said, short. how much? It's for uh, $200 an acre at $8,000. And Curry Farms was the other one for sixty-one fifty. And it's for a three-year period, correct? We put it at four years. Four years this time, yes. okay. With three the last time. Yes. Uh, I think the park board uh, uh, both could implement that, but just to clear up things, I would like to have a motion to acknowledge that he did. That. Motion, okay. motion, Joe Barnes. This one says forty acres. This one says forty-one. Which is it? It's. 40, 40 acres, I think. Yeah. Plant killable, I think. So that's, that's what it's it, misprint. That's what it'd be if it's $8,000. But they got the same $8,000, though, so that's the yeah. deal. I have a motion with Joe Barnes. Got a second? Yeah. Second by Larry Cow. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Also, what happened to that paper reduction? Yeah, one more issue. Paper, paper, yeah. paper uh, reduction I had years ago. Okay. Uh, well, I've got your attention. Um, the governor put a 6% sales tax on us last year. And basically he's come back and said that for golf membership, you know, golf uh, members, uh, just cat ground and everything. So now we're going to have to go back on it and advise it. And I just need something into the minutes. State that we're going back in, in into the old ways. Um, we're going to try to set the rates. We went to the golf course committee. And we're going to try to set the rates back a little bit and go from there. Just going to drop the tax. Yes, we're going to drop the tax, and we've dropped it a little bit on top of it too. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, I appreciate you bringing that to us. I don't think that uh, we'd have to have a motion, but since he's here and wants it, if one of you wants to do that, we'll do it. He presented to me. I'll make a motion. Motion by Jason Bullock. Second was Sam Small. So what, what's the motion again? To revise the uh, uh, rate at the park, campground, and golf course because of the dropping of the sales tax. They haven't done it, but they're going to Right. Go you just want to revisit. leave it at the discretion of the golf committee then? Yes. So I'll make a motion just to leave it to the uh, yes. season yes. cost or whatever. Yeah. Fees I mean, or whatever. We, we, well, well, the fees are going to change too. They're yeah, dropping the tax. The fees are dropping. Course, yeah. yeah. And you're not setting it, so you're just leaving the, the discretion of them, which they probably well, have we've already. Well, we talked about it as a committee and He actually brought to me the envelope, and I put it on the side code with it. So he was, I mean, yeah. I, I, I just basically need something set in stone because July 1 is when we're going to have to set our, send our bills out again for. Membership, so I basically need something in the motion. And put, okay, so I've got it in the minutes that due to the tax rates changing, that it's going to be left to the discretion of the committee. Yes, that's the motion. Okay. Any further discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. That motion carries. And uh, I don't see it on the agenda here, 
But Chase is here and he usually don't come by just to see us. <laughs> Do you have something? No. Uh, not really. I okay, good deal. No, I'm glad you're here. Not. We're happy you're here, okay? <laughs> okay, we're we're down. You did what? We got a new F5 for potential industry at Bluegrass Crossing. Good deal. That's always good. I'm sorry, Bess. Come on up. Yeah. You don't have to raise that hand a lot higher than that. Wait. I just said the receipt for transferring delinquent tax to the county clerks, just for the record. It can be in the court minutes. So moved. Uh, Motion. Can you make an acknowledgement? Yeah. yeah. Motion. Larry Cowan made it. You second it? Yeah. Okay. Motion by Larry Cowan, second by Joe Barnes. Can you email that to me? Can you have that one? Okay. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like Sam. Motion carries. Okay. Sam. Yep. You're up. Uh, really don't have much to say except uh, I did hear that that uh, Purdue is in the hiring business again. Wonderful. And uh, wanting all kinds and all positions and persons third shift. So anybody out there looking for a job, uh, come and apply. Okay, sounds good. Jason. No, thank you. Joe. Uh, yeah, I think we need to be looking at the flex funds the longer we drag that okay. out. Okay. We're going to have a, a road department meeting on the, what day is the meeting, 11th? What day is the next? Do you want to do before the special call or do you do No, no, the next, the, the June, 11th. June, 11th. June 11th at 4 o'clock. We're going to come in there. By that time, we will have, uh, f for sure, on these other discretionary funds I think we're going to get, we'll have all that. We'll bring it all to that road committee meeting at that time. I've talked to every one of you individually about it. And we're going to have to all talk together and, and come up with their plan. I was just worried about, you know, that's how sometimes we get, we don't get it in very soon. Yeah. And then right. we'll get on the later list with Scotty's paper. Well, hopefully we'll have it out there at that time. I will be bringing in the costs on several roads in all districts for you to look at. Uh, Taking a lot of money in the that's where we are. Okay. Do we have a special call meeting in between? We do. But it it's for the second read of the budget, and second read of the budget ordinance amendment, and then we'll pay bills. We're gonna we could have, could have uh, litigation. Yeah, litigation. And we'll adjust. advertise the agenda later. It's gonna be May twenty eighth, five o'clock. May twenty eighth, five o'clock. May twenty eighth, five o'clock. Special, Special call for the budget ordinance and bills to pay for late late in the May twenty eighth, five o'clock. So you got it in there about the road meeting. meeting. Yeah. yeah. Now, will the road department meeting be then or next? No, week? it'll be June the 11th or okay. 4th. Okay. Where is it? Where is it? May it's strictly to talk about flex and discretion, the flex funds. But in that time, we will be given a complete report on the all funds. Yeah. June the 11th meeting will be at 4 o'clock then. Is yeah. That yeah. Yeah. Unless somebody wants to pick place. This, this is a special, this is an extra, extra meeting. You know, we got a ex a extra meeting a month in every every uh, district. Where's this meeting going to be? At? Well, gonna, this one and going to be here. Here. Yeah. Okay. Special call. Yeah. Okay. The twenty eighth. Yes. Because right. we're going to do the closed session with Justin, so it'd be better if we're here. Uh, okay, Larry. No. Larry Morphew. I don't have anything. Justin. Yeah, it's, uh, just one thing. Uh, Ann and I were talking for clerical issues that we just want to clear up you know we talked about the line of credit a little bit and on february 12th you, you agreed to uh, open up that line of credit for the five hundred thousand. i think we probably need a motion uh that for the purposes of those reasons previously set out by this court to authorize the county treasurer to draw upon that line of credit uh, by submitting all necessary documents in detail to first united bank as needed Certainly not to exceed the 500000 and to authorize the county treasurer to repay said loan amount to First United when reimbursement is received by the state. And that to make that effective as of May 1st, because I think that's when we first started drawing on it. Okay. I'll make that motion just like he said. Motion by Sam Small to approve the motion that was uh, read by Justin. Excuse me, Mary. And uh, she's going to record that in the minute. I'll second that if nobody has. Second by Larry Cam. 
Any further discussion or questions for Justin? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like the sign. Uh, now we are open to any uh, comments from from uh, that's for the good of the body from the uh, general public. I see you. Yes, Emily. Sorry, we had a great Come. turnout at our event that I spoke about at the last meeting, um, our Young Eagles event. We had 109 kids that we flew um, from the county, so it was really cool. Um, I personally flew seven. Um, I can only fit one in my airplane, so I was kind of the <coughs> slow one at the end. But um, every kid that I flew, except for one, it was their first time ever in an airplane. So it was just a really, really cool day um, to get to introduce aviation to kids in our county. Um, so thank you guys for your support on that. and. Um, we're, we're thankful for it. We've had a lot of community support on that event, so yes. we're really excited about that. Um, and then our construction that we've had going on for our ramp, um, there should be finishing up hopefully this week. They've got the first layer of pavement on today, so that's been going well. Um, they're going to be finished up hopefully a couple of weeks ahead of schedule, so um, things are going well with that. So I just kind of wanted to give you guys a, a report on what we've got going on at the airport and thank you guys again for your support. Yeah, thank and you very much. And Emily, your FBO told me that he was really close on having a uh, charter plane, a Learjet. Yes. Uh, they'll be based there. Yes. And uh, also, the, that's a, also we've got a track on some funding to get a, uh, a jet A tank maybe. Yes, yes. Yeah, we're working on both of those things and possibly funding in the next couple of years for a new terminal, a new hangar, and a new electrical system as well. So uh, we're working closely with the state to get those funds secured as well. Good deal. I th thank you for a lot for what you do out there as well as Marty, as well as the other Marty that's yes. already left. Yeah, All of you, y'all really do a great stuff. job out there. Yeah. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you. Yes, Chase? I also think anyway should be recognized publicly for representing Ohio County on the national stage. I'm well, fortunate to congratulate her. Yes, absolutely. Congratulations. Let's give her a hand. Woo! You made us look good. Yeah, he got one puzzle and one, really. I mean, one one of the games. You got all the rest of them. So. <laughs> I got it. Yes. Something. Come on. Sure, sure. Tell your name and and no, your sure, concern. Sure. and. She's the one who had the My name is Juanita Haney. I have a farm uh, in Fortsville, uh, Tree Road. I want to first start off by thanking David Johnson and Larry Count for coming out and looking at our problem on the river. The dam, you came out in March. The dam is twice as bad as what you both saw because of the amount of water that we got through the month of April. We vote, there's only three feet of open space around this dam where the water is flowing. We are losing land. My neighbors are losing land. I have talked to the Army Corps of Engineers from Frankfurt to Louisville to Lake the, by the dam in uh, Grayson County. They are all turning their heads. They say it's not their problem. And I am fit to be tied on what's going on. This property has been in my family since 1854. We have never lost property to the river before, and I'm losing it big time. And the only <coughs> division that I have seen see that, that has the money to fix the problem is the Natural Resources Conservation Surface. They've got the money, they need to be declared an emergency. The problem is that they say you have to have seven inches of rainfall at one time. We've had between seven and nine inches of rain in the month of April alone. But what's, what has happened on top of that is we've got the Army Corps of Engineers by the dam where the resort is that is letting water out to keep the boating water, which is, they, they don't let it out just slowly. They are letting it out fast, which has caused instability on our banks. Trees are falling in more, but the amount of debris is unbelievable. And I need help. This is not going to go away. It's only going to get worse. 
And I called the, my husband called the, uh, because on the other side of the river is Grayson County. Mm -hmm. So my husband called the executive on Grayson County. We have a much better executor on our side than on their side because she said they only take care of roads. Well, uh, you know, we really, really do care. Larry and I came up there and we really do and have been working and like you said, uh, and your husband thought an, exec an order, f a declaration of emergency by May would do it. We researched that it has to be by the governor. And they've got standards, and what they do is refers to Kentucky Division of Water, which we've done. Unfortunately, we just recently done that. In the past, we went to the Army Corps of Engineers, which gave us a long run around, and then and they said, sorry about your luck. There is some money that we got one time through the Soil Conservation Service that removed one here, only one, and to my knowledge of error. It was removed. Maddox, yeah, I know. Uh, and uh, but that was because the ice storm had just happened, and the, the and, and everything. There's a lot of money put out there the, for the ice storm stuff, so that's why we got the money that time. But we have been looking for it, and. Uh, uh, and just today, Charlie and I had some ideas we're going to work on and see if they might work. And uh, basically to see if we can just... Uh, I don't think a long-reach excavator is going to reach it. I don't believe. I think it's going to take something like a log skitter and a person in a boat to hook onto them and pull them out. It's not going to be a simple... It's not way. just the, the tree. If it was just trees, it's one thing. The debris... Yes. That is coming. I mean, I mean, it is. I'd like everybody to see this. Yeah, is is that debris coming from the uh, ice storm? These are the banks that we're losing, and this is the amount of river on Rough River that's. It's hard to say, but it could zone. be. Yeah. But all that money's already gone a long time yeah. ago. Is the debris coming from and, the? And the other thing that I would suggest, and just a recommendation. I think the landowners around the river, if this is going to be our responsibility to keep that river, because I've got, I got a price already. It's going to be about twenty-five or more thousand dollars to do this. I, not coming from me. So how bad does it have to get? It's not going to clear up. And the fact of the matter is, I think if it's one time a year, every landowner around the river should have a chance to come in here and talk and have a meeting just with the river, the residents of around the river, to see what where this won't happen again. That would be good. Well, it's been real dry, can we not get the, the fire department to go down there and control burning? I don't know we could burn it in the river. Maybe if, maybe the, river when, was, if the water went down, then maybe you could do a whole lot of it. Yeah. You don't seem to be right there. I had thought of that, but it might a whole lot of it when the river goes down. Well, I mean, might reduce the lately, reduce know, the mass, so it'd be less yeah. trouble getting it out. Well, with the Army Corps of Engineers releasing water at their discretion, it's putting every landowner <laughs> who's trying to put crops or protect their. <laughs> They don't consider us at all. Well, we get the aftermath. Once in a while, and we'll let you know when this is, once in a while, Senator McConnell can intervene with them, with the Corps, and they're going to be down here signing deeds sometime in the next few months, and he's coming to the deed signing where the Corps signed over property to the county of Rochester. I mean, I had the people of the Water Department out of Bowling Green tell me that if it was Rocky Fork Creek, which is, I think I was told that you're going to put a new bridge or something uh, crossing over it, it's on your plans for the maybe this year, that there, if there was a problem on Rocky Fork, they would come out. Well, but the river is not them. theirs. So control them, I, it's hard for me to understand they how they can make the river the property owner's responsibility. If they're over a creek, nobody's over a river? It don't make any sense to me. Well, once upon a time, and I don't know why it was abandoned, there was a Rough River Authority 
See, but it's disbanded now. That mm-hmm. had ways. I don't know where uh, they sent out uh, so much. All the farmers. I don't know how they were funded, but they were not government. It was an organization called the Rough River Authority. Yeah, it's no longer in existence. I'll tell you what it is though. Uh, doesn't help Rough River. Caney Creek does have a watershed program. And on everybody's tax bill that lives on the Caney Creek watershed, pays a little small tax, and that keeps Caney Creek straight. We wouldn't have a problem in Caney. They got they got money to get that out with. Well, actually, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. To, I mean, even if you put a, you know twenty five dollars on everybody's tax bill that borders the creek, and then at least on the river, and then at least when there's a problem and they can't do it themselves, we got money for it. I'm for that. You know, there is one on Caney Creek. I pay it, actually, on my. Because it, it just seems very, to get to this point, and we've been calling every agency in the book, and they're just all, but what burns me about the Corps of Engineers is, if I want to clean it out, I got to get a permit from them. When you get down in here, they don't want they don't want to come out and look at it. No. But I have to go to them to get a permit to clean it. Yeah, we are going to intensify our trying to help with that it, to the point of calling uh, Mitch McConnell. And now the state division of water is coming in, and we'll see if there's anything. I mean, we'll pursue it. It's. Uh, uh, they told you right about one thing. It'd be a lot easier for us if it, if this county road backed up to it. There's it it really to would. Something. But we would have to get easements from the property owners and Even a whole bunch of stuff. Even if it is to put a, put an extra tax on us that are you know around it or something because you know just to to take care of problems as they start if somebody uh, can't yeah, manage we, it. Yeah. Are we going to be able to put the debris near the bank there? Until it rots away, we'll be able to store it there. Yeah. We got it out. It probably but I want to thank you and Larry Collins for coming out because you're you're the only ones that have. Yeah, we weren't sure if your son was going to run us off in the river when he got us there or not. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have a life jacket. But well, no, it, it, was, it was a good day. If you did get up on the you know, bank, I'd burn it. Yeah. It'll just a flood and yeah. go back, and back in there. Yeah, you're right. But well, thank you. Thank you. Let me, let me get. I, I'd like to talk just for a minute. She's mad. I get to do all the work. <laughs> but anyway, I, I do understand the frustration. I'll gladly, I do. We, I and my son, we'll gladly pull all the big stuff out. That's not. It has hasn't been a time to do it. But here, but the problem here is, is one day that water's up here, the next day that water's down here. The banks are cracking off. The trees are falling in. I mean, it's something has got something has got to give. Uh, Larry, you asked what the little stuff is. It's corn stalks. It's it's everything under the sun, and that's where the problem's going to be. We can pull the big stuff out, but the little stuff, I don't know what I have with it. Uh, I had. I don't think anybody showed up. I had. Four to six neighbors were going to come, but you know how that is. But they're concerned because all the water goes down that river, and that river is uh, Charlie Shields is coming out there tomorrow. Uh, he's going out there with me, but I mean, the river is completely flooded. It is completely flooded off. Yeah. I know from in pictures it's eat out more since oh, yeah, exactly. since we were there. It's, it's done more since we were there. Yeah. Since, uh, since March, we've lost 20 foot of bank. Wow. Yeah, I mean, there's no a long reach track boat can't even reach it now. I don't think we could have been from over there. I could not understand what, how Frank Maidens ever happened, but now I do because yep. you let it go and it just goes around and the ground just goes down the river. It'll make another path if you yep. if you don't do something about yep. it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well. If uh, no one else has anything for the good of the body, this meeting's adjourned.